Remember, this entire manga and every manga on this channel is hand-drawn by myself. And now you too can learn exactly how to make your own viral Dragon Ball mangas at www.makemanga.com where you can learn directly from me. My mangas have got me on TV, on newspapers and even earned me over $60,000 a month on Patreon alone. And now you can click the link in the description and pinned comment of this video and do it yourself. You only need to see the website to see just how many thousands of you are taking this opportunity right now. And don't forget also, the next video to this Ultra Vegito series has already been made and is live now on my Patreon right now for over 4,500 of you incredible fans to watch after this. Again, links are in the pinned comment and description. Enjoy! So our story continues with a distressed Piccolo, flying frantically over the green and blue lands of planet Namek, eagerly heading towards a supposed last stand battle between the Namekians and the demon invader. But as he would fly at breakneck speeds, he would find himself at an end with regards to seeing any sign of a battle, as he would comment, where? Where are they? Mori said they'd be here, and their energies were visible for a second, but... Uh, huh? Suddenly, the legendary Namekian's prayers would be answered, as right in front of him, the two warriors battling it out were about to make a grand entrance. Uh! As suddenly, flooding from the ground into the sky would be a giant fiery mushroom cloud that takes Piccolo by surprise as its sheer power alone gives a hint of the level of life or death battle that would be taking place. Be gone you monster! <laughs> as suddenly, in the orange hue of the fiery backdrop, the so-called demon leader would be seen dodging a punch from a bulky Namekian warrior. The aforementioned fusion of all the most powerful Namekians on Namek. Impressive, mortal! I did not expect to find power such as yours on my very first planet. What did you say this technique was called? Fusion! I shall report back to Lord Lucif with these findings. <laughs> but enraged to the point a vein would pop on his green forehead, the combined Namekian would just grumble with sharp gritted teeth. For what you have done to my brothers, there will be no message to return! Your body will die here, left to rot and grow the trees of Namek! <laughs> Enough talk! <laughs> but with intense speed, the armored demon would be quick to reassert his dominance, slamming his knee instinctively to the warrior Namekian's jaw to shut him up instantly. <laughs> and as the now dipping in and out of consciousness warrior would float backwards, the demon would not be finished and immediately would grab him by the scruff of his clothing. <laughs> Keep your hands off of me, you demons! can go back to hell! <laughs> but the Namekian would just show his tenacity in return, immediately kicking away the demon's grip, much to the leader's surprise. <laughs> but it wouldn't be long before the demon would have a surprise of his own, grabbing tightly onto the foot of the green fighter before... <laughs> opening his mouth wide in a vicious yell 
he would pull the leg of the Namekian until... Hell! That would be child's play for the residents of the Demon Realm, fool! Immediately, tossing the helpless warrior far into the distance, as if the mere mentioning of Hell and Demon together was a grave insult. And as the fused Namekian would move at unparalleled speed, feeling every bit of g-force and velocity pushing his very organs to the edge, the alien fighter could hardly believe what he would be feeling, mumbling, What? Insane strength? By Guru? What are these things? <laughs> Until ultimately smashing into the hardened surface, of a centuries old mountain, instantly cracking it in all directions as if shattering a pane of glass. <coughs> but out of the rubble, the last remaining hope of the Namekians would not give up so easily. Struggling his way out of the mountain, now bleeding, as he would defiantly say, You, you, Pay for all of this! We warrior class may not have been able to save Namek from Frieza, but we will from you! <laughs> Frieza, you say? But as the Demon Lord would descend to the ground and begin walking forward, his interest would seemingly be piqued by the foreign name uttered out, as he would say, Could this mortal have meant Izar? How? Nobody told me that freak was allowed to escape by Lucif also. It's impossible. After all, if this green goblin really had made contact with him, he hardly would have the breath to tell the story. Before eventually, his armored foot would come to a stop, and with a devilish grin, he would let out. Never mind! The more of our kind here, the merrier! All I know is that this planet is ours now. You fought valiantly, but there is a reason. Why, for millennia, our kind could not meet with yours. <laughs> Natural selection! As now completely ready to end things, with his teeth bared, his arm raised, and a concentrated black ball of energy being created within his palm, the invading demon would point directly at his prey until... <laughs> what? Firing off instantly the powerful energy ball, the speed would be so great that before the Namekian could even muster a true reaction, his entire face would be caught in complete shock and lost in the panic of its approach. With all he can mutter in his final moments being... Elder Mori, I'm sorry. <laughs> what? But before the fused Namekian would enter the next dimension, in the nick of time, the legendary Piccolo would finally arrive, swiping away the powerful ball with a single arm a hint of effort on his face, staring coldly forward instead as his Namekian brethren would just look down, completely dumbfounded. <sighs> but as the roar of the bull's impact and subsequent explosion rattles him from behind, his shock and awe would be broken as he would quickly snap back to reality. 
Realizing instantly that there were supposedly no more warrior Namekians left on Namek, as he would question first, Wait! Who are you? A villager? You were told to hide! Get back now! This is no place for you, little brother! Run and hide immediately! We warrior class will handle this! <laughs> Run! But these comments from the uninformed warrior would only bring a smirk onto the Z fighter's face. As Piccolo, with a confident look, would just reply, I don't think running is something I've ever done, and it won't start now. Don't worry about me, worry about yourself. I have a feeling I'm not who you think I am. <clears throat> but these words from Piccolo would not bring calm but rather just raise more questions for the bulky warrior. As he would wonder, what do you mean? If you are not of the warrior class, then you are just asking to die. If I have to save you, it will only make things harder. <laughs> not to worry, brother. But in a shocking response, as Piccolo would turn his head around, it would not be his voice, nor presence, that would respond. As Nail, who exists within him, would finally make an appearance once more. Letting out, I will make sure this one does not get in our way. We are here to help. You fought well. But with us on your side, we will surely finish this together. What is your name, brother? Because Namek is all of ours to protect! Not Nail! But as if the old protector of the late Guru was some sort of folk legend, the warrior would instantly recognize him from presence alone. <laughs> I see! And it's with this now known that almost instantly his facial expression would change. His whole demeanor now infinitely more confident as a smirk would arise on the warrior's face and he would say, My apologies, elder brother. I really did not realize who exactly I was talking to. Tales of your legendary bravery have not failed to live on. Fighting Freezer, all by yourself? We warrior class could only dream to have that kind of confidence to fight alone. But together, you may call us Oboe. Huh. To which the much smaller stature Piccolo, who would already be ducked down in fighting stance, would respond, that old geezer Mori. Guess he wouldn't let me be forgotten after all. But I'm glad you have confidence in me now, Obo. Worry not. This won't be anything like what happened with Frieza. <laughs> As suddenly, both Namekians would then begin tensing their bodies a noticeable pressure rising over them in tandem like a stream of hot air until... <laughs> Together, the two last hopes of Namek would power up ferociously, their auras in sync as if almost combining, as a strange orange hue would begin to develop from their auras mixing together. <laughs> and this rise in power level, on both an individual level and together, would not go unnoticed by the demonic opponent. With his arm folded, looking on almost impressed as he would comment, Now, what do we have here? 
Another goblin! But this one seems even stronger than the last. How curious! Not one of my men reported his existence. Where exactly did he come from, I wonder? <laughs> Before quickly preparing himself, the demon too would stagger his legs and move his arms down too in a unique fighting stance of his own. Letting out finally... Never mind! The more powerful the souls here, the greater the meal, once we devour their life force. Lord Lucif will be sure to reward me greatly for such an unexpected source of power. And at the very least, this will prove far more entertaining for me than previously thought. Obo! And, and just like that, together, both Piccolo and Obo would fire forwards, brothers in arms, each with the conviction to save their home planet for once and for all, while at the same time avenging all of their fallen brothers, young and old. But on the other side of the coin, in the demon realm, Ultra Vegito 2 would be done with the charades. He too powering up, now to his Super Saiyan Blue form, having finally realized just what kind of path to power he must now reclimb. Now that not only Goku and Vegeta have left him, but Lucif too as all around him, a majestic baby blue energy of divine nature would lighten up the dark backdrop of the land of the demon. Oh! And looking, seeming rather impressed, would of course be the demon emperor of Sector 10, Aiza. A cunning smirk on his face as he would comment, Blue hair now? Well, I'll be damned. Seems there was more after the red hair after all. Was that other Saiyan truly holding back against me? Strange decision. Considering how badly he got beat up. <laughs> other Saiyan? But the mentioning of another of the God Killer's kind would be quick to raise his back as he would continue. Don't tell me. Another like me exists down here? Who? <laughs> but giggling away, amused by his opponent's naivety, Isa would fold his arms and explain. Uh, not exactly. I can confirm. You're the first flesh pile in a long while to find your way here. Especially of your kind. But I have known another Saiyan like you. Though, he was a god. A member of the five strongest, in fact. Who regularly found his way here to suppress the growing number of lower demons. Slaughtering them in mass and thinking he was powerful doing so. His tune changed, however, once I confronted him, like I did you. He went red, but never blue. And after a good beating, never quite showed his face in Sector 10 again. I believe his name was Yomoshi. Something stupid like that. <laughs> and Vegito, of course knowing exactly who he was talking about, would just turn to his side with a smirk as Yomoshi were actually there, saying, 
Oh, that saying! From a coward like that, I can imagine it perfectly. A similar thing happened when I confronted him too. And yes, he was never able to reach blue. So I'll be sure to show you just what it's like. <laughs> My form is greater than yours! Leaving Yamoshi to just grumble to himself. <laughs> but as the two would be finished, the God Killer would turn his gaze back to Isa and declare one last reveal, letting out... But you know, when he fought me, he never escaped. In fact, he now resides within me. <laughs> Taking Isa back in that instant, as he momentarily becomes confused with the out of context statement before. <laughs> Out of nowhere, Vegito Blue would appear with now instantaneous speed to strike Isa right under the chin, with the demon truly not able to even muster a flinch before impact, as his body is sent flailing backwards as purple blood shoots out of his mouth in tow. <laughs> So this is just the right level for you, huh? As a now smirking once more after his previous annoyance at needing to transform for such creatures, Vegito would finally find his groove once again. <gasps> As instantly, with lightning quick speed, he would then chase after the helplessly flying Emperor. And with rage in his face, almost as if he was seeing the gods who forsaked him once again, or perhaps even lose him, the few Saiyan would pull back his fist with grave intention before... With a gigantic impact, Vegito, with his arms flexed with veins, would slam his fist straight onto the face of the Emperor, smashing him onto the ground for a grand smoke-inducing explosion. <laughs> Until almost immediately leaving the scene like a hit and run, flying straight up into the sky. <laughs> now this is the domination I like to see! As full of battle lust and joy at his attacks, his teeth would begin to bear from his sheer joy. As suddenly, like lifting a giant boulder, the God Killer would form a makeshift spirit bomb like attack, looking down at his down foe before. This! is the power of a real Saiyan! What?! As without any hesitation, Vegito would then rain down his attack. All the while, Isa Below would just begin to notice how his entire body lights up. Flash pile! And as the distance would close rapidly, with the humongous ball now dwarfing both Vegito and Isa, the demon would only be left to scream. Until eventually, with his end seemingly sealed, with his face now being lost to its nearing shine, he would only mumble one final time. Ooh. Who does this runt think he is? Until ultimately, landing and eviscerating the ground below, shredding whatever was below to dust, 
the ball would eventually cause an explosion like no other in the demon room, shaking its confines to its very core. <laughs> Sayonara, Emperor! As Vegito, with Aiza now well and truly dispatched of, would just disrespectfully give off a wink and a peace sign, as he would scratch his head and think, Maybe I went a little too far with that last attack. I hope I didn't wake up the rest of these freaks. But as the smoke from the crater Vegito had just created would begin to rise into the sky, suddenly, when all would be dissipated, not a trace of Isa would remain. <gasps> Wait! Do demons erase after death? I don't know. I accidentally blew those last five into smithereens! I wonder... <laughs> but such questions would be answered soon enough, when in a flash, Isa would return, right behind the god killer with a grin and facing his blind side, as he would then yell mid-attack, THE ONLY DEATH HERE IS YOURS BY MY HAND FLESH PILE! <laughs> you and your cute nicknames. I should make one for you too. How about... Broken Nose! <laughs> As with a perfect reaction and movement, like a hammer striking a nail, the god killer would simply snap back his hand and strike hard onto the face of Isa, instantly bloodying it. And with his face now becoming redder by the second, so too would his rage build as he would begin to question a mortal from up there! Not even a god! Surpassing a demon emperor! What has gone on up there to cause this? Lucif, what have you done? I will not stand for this! As letting loose, his true demonic and beastly state now, unleashing from his frustration, Isa's face would practically morph, stretching widely his mouth as he lets out a bone vibrating yell that travels all through the realm. But ducking his head down, attempting to calm himself, he would soon think, there's only one way to end this! And how embarrassing it is that I would need to use this for the likes of him! Hopefully, no other emperor is watching! <sighs> As instantly, Isa would then fly high into the sky, almost as if escaping. <laughs> his body moving at untold speeds like a bullet to the point his legs would appear as merely a blur. <laughs> he stopped! Until eventually, within the sight of the god killer, way above, Isa would come to a halt, with his body now surrounded in aura. Impressive, Saiyan! You were right. You are no Yamoshi. As now full of vigor and cockiness, it would seem once again, Emperor Aiza would lift his arm straight into the air, a mysterious slow-moving energy coating his body. <laughs> As Vegito, looking up with a hint of caution, 
would say, His energy, it's spiking. Looks like the clown is ready to end the show. He's putting his all into whatever that is. Correct, Saiyan. As eyes are still bleeding from the mouth, would add, I must say, this was mighty fun. More fun than I have had in a while. And if this is the kind of challenge that awaits me in the mortal realm, then perhaps, maybe I will challenge for the spot of the true devil. And right now, you will have the honor of seeing the one move that will get me there. As instantly, from the palm of his hand, the energy that coated him now extend and shoot upwards. As right into the dark clouds of the demon realm, the beam would now penetrate. All the while, the god killer would continue to watch from below. Eventually completely disappearing, as no more would curiously leave Isa's hand. For a moment, there would be a deathly silence in the air, until... In a beastly roar, or more demonic I should say, a giant demon's face made of pure black energy would fire down from the sky right behind the Emperor. And with a scream, the demon would yell, Here is your welcome and goodbye from the demon realm! Spear of Isa! As instantly, uniquely, it would blast through and cover the body of the Emperor. His signature blast coming straight down and towards Vegito. Whoa! And as it almost instantaneously would close most of the distance, the God Killer would just be left staring. <laughs> so I was right! Until he would then step his feet apart, partially tense his muscles, and then... Uh, Swiftly, his arms and hands would come together into iconic fashion. The result of what he would be attempting to do being obvious to us all. Until... Uh, <sighs> unexpectedly, in a huff, the God Killer would just lower his arms immediately, letting the incoming Spear of Isa to get closer he would comment almost unsatisfied. Enough! This doesn't need to be a struggle at all. The more time I'm down here, the more I can't be sure what's going on on Earth. <clears throat> As suddenly, his eyes would then close. Along with it, he would descend back down to bait strange strategy, given what's at stake, but soon enough, we would know why. As immediately as he would open his eyes, his green seraphim would activate in complete and utter overkill. As instantly, he would fly straight into the eye of the approaching Demon Blast. Like a rocket, truly in a blink of an eye. Ultimately, causing the demon face that once adorned it to be utterly disfigured. Destroyed in an instant, as completed Vegito would smash through as if there was nothing there to begin with. What? Wait! And even Isa, right in the middle, would notice immediately the world of pain that was fast approaching him. His entire technique 
that he was so confident in now dismantling right before his eyes. All the while, Vegito's cold face would just get closer and closer, his green eyes piercing into his soul as he would just finally say, Death waits for no one, demon! And only nanoseconds later, the god killer would be with the emperor, his arm pushing hard across his neck, lariat style. Just one final wince of pain. In brutal, violent scenes, Emperor Iza of Sector 10's head would pop right off like a corkscrew, completely decapitated into the air as his lifeless body would spout a lava eruption of blood. Curiously, with no sign of Vegito anywhere to be seen, and as we would look closer at the careering upwards lone face of Isa, it would be clear his death was already assured, with no sound heard until... <coughs> above, with his back turned, Vegito would finally appear again, but mid-movement of his body, he attempts some form of mid-air flip, until... With insane technique, like a footballer, the God Killer would then bring down an almighty slam of his foot to kick Isa's skull so disrespectfully as if it were a mere inanimate object. As we would then zoom out and see his body fully rotated upside down and see the head would in fact have crashed back down into his decapitated body and straight down to the ground for a meat explosion. And as we would finally then see the bloodied horrific aftermath with Isaac's body buried under layers of rubble and his now emptied of blood head sat perfectly next to it, Vegeta would eventually come to land. But as he would look down, a face of deep thought would come over him, as he would just ominously wonder, Now what to do? This energy of his, do I really take it and make use of demon energy once again? I already know how that turned out last time. Nail! But back with the two protectors of Namek, both Piccolo and Obo would be completely engaged with their own problems, with their demon still alive and kicking, and seemingly still with the upper hand, even when facing them two on one. <laughs> One down! Ah! And most telling of this would be when the demon leader would successfully slam a kick right across the face of Obo, instantly dizzying the Namekian as blood would fly out. Obo! And taking the hit to his brethren, particularly personal, Rage would fill Piccolo as he instantly moves forward to strike the demon in revenge. <laughs> Come, you green men are like flies to fire! As instantly on impact, Piccolo and the demon leader would find themselves locked hand in hand. Their powers now seeming more equal after Piccolo's triggering, with neither budging as they both struggle. I've got your back, Nail! 
but the resilient, fused warrior of Namek would be quick to get back into the battle, successfully reaching the backside of the demon as he prepares a punch to ferociously land from behind. All the while, the demon leader would seem to not realize or react at all. <laughs> Foolish goblin! But it would seem even we would be fooled. Without even looking behind, the demon leader would simply then extend his horns violently upwards. <laughs> Ultimately stabbing the warrior Namekian straight through his torso and perhaps even fatally, before he can even make his attack. <sighs> leaving Oboe to now fall to the ground like a poisoned fly. His strength and health sapped almost instantly from the attack, leading to a loud crash on the ground as the oversized fighter would make impact. And with blood gushing fast out of his wound, the likelihood of a vital point being severed becomes all the more sure. No Obo! And once again, having to worry about his partner, Piccolo would be left in shock, once more unable to have protected his people. You pay for that! And in response this time, while still locked hand in hand, the eyes of Piccolo would begin to shine brightly as if each pupil of his were preparing a sphere of energy until... In a shocking sight, the demon would lose his, as Piccolo would blast from his eyes a beam that strikes directly into the eyes of his opponent. What have you done? immediately causing the demon entity to recall back in agony, grabbing at his now potentially non-existent eyes, as not a thing would be visible to him anymore. Hmm. Hold on, I'm coming, Obo! But surprisingly, Piccolo, instead of taking advantage of the vulnerable position his target would be in, would instead fly straight towards his fallen comrade, choosing to not let even one more Namekian die on his watch. Obo! And soon enough, he would find his massive body, laying motionless on the ground, still leaking trails of blood. Eventually, he would land, pull Obo up, and then onto his shoulders levitating upwards as he struggles to balance his body before... <laughs> like a rocket, he'd fly off towards nearby mountains, aiming to take Obo to safety and away from the demon's impending danger. And it wouldn't be long before in an open space, hidden among the towering rocky formations, Piccolo would stand over Obo. Eventually, though, Piccolo would begin to walk away, looking behind and saying, Rest now, brother. You've done more than enough. All you need to do is stay alive, and when I'm finished with him, I'll get you a healer. No! <sighs> but using the last of his strength with his fading breaths, Obo would adamantly deny being made to wait behind, even in his condition. As he would say, with one eye open, blood seeping from his mouth. Nail, you were the most extraordinary of the warrior class. You know our way of life. We either die in battle or never live to begin with. My injuries are too severe to last any longer. There's only one way to give me a proper send-off. 
Make use of my energy! All of us are brothers of Namek! We can live on through you! And with that said, a silence would befall Piccolo as he would look down in deep contemplation, not uttering a word. Before with his decision made, he would then crouch down somberly and place his hand on Oboe's dying chest, a smile coming across the warrior's face as he, knowing what Piccolo had just committed to, would let out. Thank you, brother. You won't regret this. You cowards! But as this would be going on elsewhere, the demon leader's eyes would recover, and with it, his rage and disgust for the mortals reignited too. And looking side to side, he would question, Where have you two goblins gone? I'm going to destroy everything if I don't see you in the next... <gasps> but the demon's threats would soon come to a premature close, when something out of place would be sensed afar within the mountains. Wait, another one has arrived! No? As sudden, exploding upwards from the ground itself, it would seem, would be a majestic orange pillar of pure energy. So large that even from a distance, it would still appear larger than the demon. As the leader would watch on, completely stunned and petrified, to the point he would barely move. <laughs> As finally, from the fusion of Obo and Piccolo, the fusion of Namek's greatest warriors with the Namekian of Earth, Orange Piccolo is finally born. His power fueled by his loyalty to Namek and his determination to protect it. An all new level of strength, unlike seen in any timeline of Piccolo, would now be created. As with a cold stare, in his now several times larger and more bulked up state, he would just look towards the demonic invader and say, For Obo, for the pain and suffering of my people, you will die here! But that was it for today's video guys, if you made it this far, leave me a hashtag orange in the comments down below and let me know what you think of Piccolo's all new form in this short preview. Or just find out what happens right now on my Patreon where you can see the full next video fully voice acted, soundtracked and edited for you to enjoy with over 4,500 plus other fans as well as getting access to 250 plus other fan mongers too. It's the deal of the century.